Microsoft Excel is somewhat of a staple in the supply chain industry, used by everyone from small retailers to large multinational corporations. Despite this, over the last decade, many a CIO has made it their goal to get rid of it in favor of more modern, scalable tools. Today, we're going to discuss this aspiration and understand why replacing it is easier said than done. So, Janice, what do you see as the role of Microsoft Excel in the supply chain industry? Um, I mean, it, it's literally um, the Swiss knife of supply chains. You know, it's the thing that is like ubiquitous uh, and uh, used everywhere for pretty much any sort of purposes. And it, it's actually very impressive how much, how, how I would say, how much gets actually done through Excel. I mean, mo for my own, you know, guesstimation, I would say probably like ni over 90% of the supply chains worldwide are run through Excel. Not through SAP, not through. Blah, blah. Yes, we, you have SAP to basically as your um, uh, as your to manage your assets. So it's not an enterprise. It's it's not like enterprise resource planning, but enterprise resource management that works well. But as far you know, um, the, the the predictive supply chain optimization is concerned, I would say over ninety percent of it is presently done uh, across all the markets through for Excel. So if over 90% of the industry is using it, why is it so popular? Why are people so sort of reliant on it? So it's interesting. I mean, the first part of the answer is um, because I believe until very recently, maybe until LOCAD, but that's, you know, a very biased viewpoint is that there was not that many, you know, um, superior alternatives. Uh, because most of the supposedly superior alternatives are actually not superior. Uh, in, in, in several ways that we can describe. So first, uh, people did not, you know, drop Excel, not because they were, you know, stupid and, uh, and, and religiously attached to Excel, but just because um, there was no actually credible alternatives. And I believe to a large extent this is true. Okay, so what are, what are the characteristics then of Excel, which are its key kind of strengths, and why do people like that? One of the things that makes it very, very powerful is that um, you can combine two things which are, um, I would say, Program, uh, programmability uh, and um, uh, the level of expressiveness that comes with this sort of, uh, of system. And the second thing is that you, it's heavily distributed in your organization, meaning that you have many supply chain practitioners you know, across many countries, many locations, many product lines and whatnot, and, and each one of those persons will be able to craft its own heuristics. So by the way, and heuristics... So what, what do you mean by heuristics? How do you sort of define that? A heuristics is kind of a, a numerical recipe that is not provably correct. It's kind of, you know, uh, a best attempt at having something that is approximately correct. The, 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 from a, usually from a pure mathematical perspective, the heuristic is not even correct. You know, it's, it's a, but it kind of works. Just to give you the sort of heuristics that you will find uh, in supply chain would be, well, the amount of stock that we want to keep is um, uh, exactly twice the number of units that we sold last year at the same period, considering a, a, a three-month window. Why, why a three-month window? Why last year? Why exactly having in stock 2x what we had at this period? That's just a heuristic. You know, that's, that's, that's like a, 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 a numerical uh, recipe that has been kind of battle tested. And it kind of works. And sometimes you don't even know exactly why it works. But it has been tried and tested. And the, the, the magic numbers, like the duration for the time window, the, the, the factor that you use, all of that has been kind of tried and tested and slightly adjusted over time. And from one division to another, from one location to another, I mean, all those used heuristics varies. And um, what is great about you know, the spreadsheet is that you can have them um, uh, embedded into your organization through, I would say, a whole sea of spreadsheets that implement all those super diverse heuristics. Okay, so what we're kind of seeing in the industry then is that this basic approximation is good enough and a lot of supply chains have basically been running on that for decades. Exactly. I mean, when you say good enough, that's, that's also something that is interesting, is that they have been also running on it for decades. And um, from my perspective, it's interesting because now, nowadays, uh, I would see Excel as a technological dead end. 
So companies have already had ample time to come up with their heuristics, refine them, and get the most of them. So it's interesting, and they got to the point where they had already reached, I would say, the most of those heuristics that you can have with um, Excel. And when I mean Excel, I don't mean just Excel. I mean any kind of software that gives you, uh, you know, uh, a, a spreadsheet-like, you know, environment. So, for example, Google Sheet would just be exactly the same than Excel in this respect. It doesn't matter if it's exactly Excel. What matters is that it's the the the, um, the spreadsheet data model that is, you know, um, uh, that is important here. The fact that it's Excel or maybe the Open Office uh, alternative doesn't doesn't really matter. So, interestingly, so those companies explored, you know, what you can do. With, um, with a spreadsheet um, during the 90s. And I think they, they, they reached a point of, of, for many large companies, of having something relatively stabilized um, in, in the early 2000s. So we are now nearly, I would say, two decades down the, the road of having something that has been already kind of stabilized, where there is nothing really new in this respect. And, um, and it's, it's indeed a technology called dead end because once you've compiled all those heuristics, once you, you've done that, the only things that are left are, um, I would say, things that are slightly inconsequential. So you say it's a technological dead end. So what's, what's really missing then? What's the problem with this kind of spreadsheet-based approach? I mean, first, there are some people who misunderstood what are the limitations of Excel. Um, some people uh, think, or, you know, I mean, it's a, I would say it's a common misunderstanding, I would say, uh, that um, you have a scalability problem with, uh, with Excel that you cannot process a lot of data. I would say, yes, indeed, you cannot process terabytes of data with Excel spreadsheets. Uh, but that's, that's not actually a real problem. Um, you see, if Microsoft decided not to have spreadsheets that could deal with billions of lines, it's not that they couldn't do it. They could. You know, they, they did increase from uh, at the uh, in I think it was Excel ninety seven where they went from uh, sixty five thousand max lines to one million something lines. They could, you know, bump up the limit to a billion lines, you know, it, it, would, it would be uh, with a different version of Excel geared toward large-scale data processing. So the question is, why didn't Microsoft, you know, just bump up the, 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 the scalability of Excel? It's, it's because they also know that it's, it's a dead end from a, a practical perspective. So what is not scalable about Excel um, or spreadsheets in general, not just Excel, is the programming model. You see, the programming model is that whenever you have a piece of logic in, an, in a spreadsheet, if you want to do more of the same, you will basically copy and paste this piece of logic you know, across your spreadsheet. And thus, from a programming perspective, because that's, that's what we are discussing, this is a way of, of delivering you know, programming capabilities. From a programming per perspective, what you're doing is a massive replication of your logic. So you, you, you had one formula, and now you have, um, if, you're, if you're using you know, Excel to the max, you have like a million copies of your original formula. And if you have a large organization, I was describing you know, the good attributes of, of, this, of this organization through spreadsheets was that everybody could have their own heuristics. And if you take you know, a spreadsheet with a few hundreds of products and you have like two or three heuristics, that works well. Um, if you say, now I'm going to consolidate in a larger spreadsheet, um, not the three heuristics that I needed for those just, just small segment, but the 20 something different heuristics that I need for this bigger scope. Suddenly, your spreadsheet, you end up with um, a complexity problem. You know, your spreadsheet starts to contain not just, you know, two formulas that have been, like, cut and paste, but 20 formulas that are not, you know, used everywhere in the same way in the, in, in the spreadsheet, and that starts to be fairly complicated. And if, if you try to scale up to 
hundreds of heuristics through the whole organization, then it becomes a complete nightmare. So is that replicated logic? Is that the reason when we see these large spreadsheets that are kind of clunky and these calculations seems to take a while? It's that replicated no uh, logic, which is the reason it's, behind it? Yes, to a large part. I mean, again, it's the, the programming model is that you're going to have like duplicated logic all over the place. And, um, and then if you want to, the problem is, is about, it's all about the maintenance of this logic. You know, you, you end up with how do you maintain um, uh, an Excel spreadsheet that contains literally hundreds of different formulas. And I'm not talking of hundreds of different formulas with just one distinct formula per column because that's, that's the easy way, is that imagine uh, an Excel spreadsheet has a million lines, and some of those lines, they have a formula that is not just the same formula that the one that is above or below. And again, why do you need that? Because um, remember that those different supply chain practitioners uh, who are dealing with different product lines, different you know, segments, they are using different heuristics. So if you want to consolidate all of that, you end up with a spreadsheet that is like um, uh, super, super complicated and super, super heterogeneous. And that's where um, you end up with scalability problem, not on the data processing side, but on the complexity side. Uh, spreadsheets do not cope uh, uh, well with increased complexity, and it really becomes a nightmare to maintain and even to debug and even to, to understand what is going on in this in this large spreadsheet. Okay, so how can you move away from these spreadsheets then? Because I mean, these are things that organizations have spent years constructing. There's a lot of logic held within them. So how can you move away from that? So first, you will need programming capabilities. But then, do you want to replicate what you had before? And that's, that's where I, I, I fundamentally know you need something else. Why? Because if you just try to replicate the logic that you had, the spreadsheet logic that you had before, you end up with something that is not going to be better than what you had before. You know, it's, it's only going to be very, very marginally better in the sense of slightly better backups, slightly better, you know, access rights management and whatnot. So fundamentally, um, if, you, if you just say, okay, I want to take my spreadsheet and replicate that into another system, um, then you're going to be stuck in this technological dead end that I was describing. So you're going to have maybe a few percent more uh, of, of efficiency, but that's going to be uh, very thin. And once you're, you're done with that, you will get nothing better. And, and you can also have some drawbacks, you know, because uh, the problem is that this, ex this system that is supposedly to be marginally better it is also slightly more rigid. You know, the, what you're going to lose is that if you enforce a certain backup, a way of doing backups, a certain way to access the, the data, then you're probably going to lose a tiny bit of agility. So you will gain marginally on some stuff, but you will lose on agility. So I would say net gain is going to be very, very thin. So you need to think of something that will go beyond what you can get through Heuristics. So heuristics were nice. You know, heuristics were probably um, all about those, those discoveries that were made in the 90s was that you could just program through Excel sheets all those, you know, I would say uh, uh, insights and get your company rolling at scale with that. Now, if you want to go beyond that, you need to reinvent yourself and go uh, with something that gives you a chance to do better than that. Okay, you mentioned there sort of the Googles and the Amazons who have sort of gone beyond this and sort of are implementing these more modern approaches. Um, what can we learn from them and what they've implemented? Uh, I mean, that's the, 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 the crux about, you know, um, modern machine learning is how do you pass the stage of um, rule-based system? You know, the first stage about copying the human intelligence uh, in the 60s was those, uh, for, for, for people who have maybe studied a bit the history of artificial intelligence, it was um, rule-based engines, you know, decision, uh, decisions engines. So, and the heuristics that are used in supply chain are exactly that. They are kind of rules to decide whether you should purchase more, whether you should, uh, you know, buy more, produce more, uh, allocate more in, in one location or another. 
Um, and, and we have reached this stage of, you know, of having like rule-based systems and we have tuned the rules. And, uh, and if we look at what the Google and Amazon are doing, they say, oh, we are doing machine learning. So it becomes a buzzword and when it's very advanced machine learning, they, it qualifies as maybe being AI. But fundamentally, uh, it, it's something that is very simple is that say, instead of having like a static set of rules that are manually maintained, um, we want to kind of learn those rules from the historical data. Now, you, uh, what you need is, um, uh, is basically, so you have those programming capabilities, but you need like machine learning capabilities so that most of those heuristics can be actually learned directly from the data itself. And it's not necessarily something that is like, I would say exceedingly complicated. But the trick is that if your programming paradigm is incorrect, then it just do not work. And thus what you learn just do not work. Uh, and, and here we go back to something that is very interesting in specific case of uh, supply chain is that the, the, the dominant you know, paradigm for quantitative supply chain until I would say probably until a few folks like Amazon or maybe Locad you know, started to think, to see things otherwise was to have a um, classic demand forecast where you say there is only one future, we do the forecast and then everything is based on this one future. Unfortunately, if you tackle the problem from this starting point, it just do not work and you never manage to replicate the performance of those supposedly dumb heuristics. If you want to outperform those heuristics, you need to go for from the probabilistic, I would say, forecasting perspective, and then you can have a chance to outperform those heuristics. And by the way, that's exactly what uh, Amazon seems to be doing. I mean, I, I don't have you know uh, secret information about what they are doing, except uh, what they publish and what their research research teams are actually publishing. Okay, if we start sort of drawing things together now, um, what would you say to a skeptical supply chain practitioner who's probably watching this and they've got their systems which are kind of working, maybe a bit clunkily, but they are working using Microsoft Excel. Mm -hmm. I mean, is there really an incentive to move away from that? Um, I would say if, if, you're, if you're using Excel and you probably have been for, for, for let's say, one or two decades, uh, uh, the first thing would be, um, to acknowledge with that you are in a technological data, meaning that it might be good, but it's not going to go any better. Do not expect that the next version of Microsoft is going to solve anything. Excel is already an excellent product. Um, I would say it's very stable, it doesn't crash, it's actually fairly scalable. Uh, and it's, so, so it has already tons of good properties, it's not going to get really better. The spreadsheet-like um, alternatives are not going to make, I would say, any difference. They super marginally, but fundamentally, it's not going to make any difference. So now, the question is that, can you live with the fact that it's, that it's, you're just in a dead end? Um, you know, there are some industries where it's just fine, you know, um, where things are, people accept that things are just not going to be really improved anytime soon. Maybe your industry can live, you know, being in a plateau, but uh, as far as supply chain is concerned, what I see is that some, you know, there are some companies that like you know, the Amazons, the Zalandos of this world, the Rakutens, the Alibaba, that are very aggressive, technologically speaking, and they are growing very fast and they are really achieving results that supply chain wise are, um, you know, humbling for the rest of the industry. So, um, and they are not doing that with spreadsheets. So I think the lesson is you're on a plateau. Some people are, you know, doing way better and it's not marketing hype. I mean, the growth of Amazon is real. Uh, the growth of Alibaba is very real. I mean, there are some, some people who are succeeding at doing I've, I've achieved very large success at very large scale. Uh, so my, my message would be, can you really afford to be and to remain in a technological dead end? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, so to sort of conclude then, would you say that Excel is running on borrowed time and you can actually see a day when there's <laughs> no Excel at all in the industry? Uh, again, 
don't get me wrong, Excel is used frequently not for predictive optimization, but for data entries, for tabular data entries. And by the way, Microsoft won the spreadsheet wars, you know, in the, in, in the late 80s, not because they were having the best calculations for Excel, but because data entry through Excel was easier. So I, I think, you know, there are plenty, plenty of, of, uh, of, um, of situations where using a spreadsheet is just fine. What I'm saying is that if you want to do predictive supply chain optimization of a somewhat complex supply chain network, uh, Excel is, for this specific purpose, a dead end. For plenty of other things, Excel is just fine. Okay, we'll have to wrap it up there, but watch this space, I guess. <laughs> so that's everything for this week. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again next time. Bye for now.